In this video, we are going to go through all of the basic integration rules that we need in order to solve these IB Maths exams. Now in your exam, you will get your formulas here, which are in your formula booklet. So I'm going to go through a few examples for each of these. Okay, so integration we know is the opposite to differentiation. So whatever rules that we did for uh, differentiation, they're actually the opposite rules when we are, when you're applying them to an integral question. So if we are integrating all of these, we'll start with the first one. If we're integrating 6x squared, we have our integral sign at the front and we always have this dx at the end. And this just means we are integrating this function in terms of x. So the dx means we're integrating in terms of x. Okay, so if we have a basic polynomial, which is going to be our rule here, we raise the power by one, so the power of n becomes n plus one, and we take that new power and we put it on the denominator. So this will be six x cubed on three, and then we have to put our plus c constant. Now we can simplify the six and the three to just be two. So the answer will just be two x cubed plus c. Okay, if you see an integral where we have these terms that have been added and or subtracted to each other, we just integrate each of them individually. So if we integrate 3x squared, it will become 3x cubed. We raise the power by 1 and we divide by the new power. So 3x cubed on 3, the 3s will cancel out. It will just be x cubed. And then minus 2x will become 2x squared on 2 and the 2s will cancel out. So it'll just be x squared. And then if we're integrating just a constant, for example here 1, it just becomes 1x. So it'll just be x. And then we have our plus c. Okay, so that's using our first rule up here, the polynomial rule. Now if we have x on the denominator, we need to use this rule here. So the integral of 1 on x becomes ln x plus c where x needs to be greater than zero. So if we have the integral of three on x, the three just stays on the numerator, and it's the same as integrating three times one on x, so it'll be three ln x plus c. And if that didn't quite hit home, I've done an example here where we have a numerator and also a few different terms on the bottom. This will just be three ln, now this rule of thumb up here, it doesn't quite show you the full picture of how we integrate uh, when we have a, uh, a function where x is on the bottom. What needs to happen is the, the entire denominator, that needs to go inside of our LL ln function. So it'll be three at the front, ln of two x minus one. And then the derivative of our original denominator, which is now inside of our ln bracket, the derivative of this, which is two, this goes on the denominator of our answer. So if there's, a, if there's a numerator from the beginning that stays as the numerator, the denominator goes inside of our ln and the derivative of this goes on the denominator. And this is actually the opposite of if we were to derive an ln function, the opposite steps occurred then. Okay, so we've covered the first two. Now let's look at sine and cos. So if we're integrating a function six sine two x, sine integrates to negative cos. It's the opposite to differentiation. So it, the six will stay at the front, it'll be six. And then the sine goes to negative cos. So it will actually be negative six cos. Our bracket stays the same. We don't change the bracket with sine and cos functions. And the derivative of what was inside the bracket, which would be two, that is on the denominator when we are when we are integrating. So negative six cos two x over two, and this can be simplified to be negative three cos two x plus c. Okay, for this one here, a cos function will integrate to positive sine. So we'll have two and positive sine, the four x stays there, the derivative of what was inside the bracket, the four, that goes on the bottom, plus c, and then this can be simplified just to be sine of four x on two plus c. 
Okay, and to the last one, the exponential functions, e to the x, the integral of e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus c. And you might think, oh, that's interesting, it didn't change. But once again, this general formula doesn't quite give you the full picture. What we need to do is we need to, uh, when we integrate exponential functions, we need to look at the power and we need to take the derivative of the power and we put it on the denominator when we integrate, which is why in the general function here, the derivative of the power here, x, is 1. So there is an invisible over 1 here. We just don't need to write it. But if we had this question, the answer would be e to the 2x on 2 plus c, because we took the derivative of the power, which was 2, and we put it on the bottom. And this example here, we'd have 6e to the 3x over 3 plus c, which will just be 2e to the 3x plus c. Okay, so that's a bunch of examples. Uh, you do get better, of the, better at these the more you practice them. Uh, but I did want to touch on uh, quickly the difference between our integration questions, whether you'll have a definite integral or an indefinite integral. So I'll rub this out. And what I've put up here are two just example questions where one of them is an indefinite integral question and one of them is a definite integral question. And I'll work my way through both quickly here. An indefinite integral question typically gives you the derivative function f dash of x and asks you to find the original function. And to go from the derivative to the original, we need to integrate. So fx will be the integral of our derivative, which will be 3x squared minus 1 dx. And if we integrate this, we're going to get 3x cubed on, on 3, which is just going to be x cubed, and then minus, and 1 becomes x, plus c. And indefinite integral questions, you'll have a plus c. And we can try and, we can try and solve for this c if they give us some extra information. If they said, find f of x, if f of 1 is 5, that means in this line here, in our original function, when x was 1, y is 5, and we can use y is 5 and x is 1 to find what c is. So 5 will equal 1 minus 1 is just 0, so c will equal 5, and therefore fx will be x cubed minus x, and we have plus 5. So an indefinite integral question, we're typically given one function and we want to find a integral function. So we're going to get a function answer. But definite integral questions, we want to integrate and they give you little numbers here at the top and bottom of your integral. And to, to solve this, I'll solve it first and then explain what it means, we need to integrate. So the integral will be it will be x cubed minus x, the same as before, x cubed minus x. And then if we have these numbers at the top and bottom, we put a square bracket around our integral and we put our little numbers here and here. And what we want to do is we want to substitute this top number into, for, into our function for x. So it'll be 4 cubed minus 4. And then we need to subtract and we will substitute in our our second number. So 3 cubed minus 3. Now 4 cubed is, is 64, minus 4 is 60. 3 cubed is 27, minus 3 is 24. And 60 minus 24 will be 36. And notice for definite integral questions, we don't get a function as an answer, we get a number. And what this number actually means is it's the area under the curve area under this curve here between our x points of 3 and 4. So hopefully you have seen a few questions like that where we want to find an area under the curve and that's what these definite integral questions ask. So indefinite integral we get a function as an answer, definite we will get an area answer which is just a number. Okay, I encourage you to practice a bunch of questions, so good luck.